we had a conversation on this podcast in like early December. Like, okay. Chris Hummer is reporting that Bobby Petrino is a candidate for the offensive coordinator job at Texas A&M. We spent a whole segment, you know, detailing our thoughts on it, the way, the reasons why it worked, the reasons why it might not, how, you know, Bobby Petrino is not one to be pushed around. Therefore, it might actually be something that could be good for Texas A&M's offense in general. We discussed the makeup of that wild Texas A&M coaching staff, which, you know, also includes Steve Adazio, um, DJ Durkin, um, James Coley. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a bunch that they've got right there. Um, and then all of a sudden he's the offensive coordinator at UNLV. So after about three stellar weeks at UNLV, Bobby Petrino, which again, on brand for Bobby Petrino to accept a job. And then three weeks later, take a better job. Uh, did he leave notes in the lockers? I mean, he's, <laughs> so he's on his way to college station. Uh, he will be, the new offensive coordinator for Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M. Um, so it's actually happening, guys. Is this going to be a good thing for Texas A&M? I think it's all or nothing. I think it's all or nothing. I think this comes down to, and this is what I'm curious to know what you guys think, because this is my read of it. They met a month ago, had these talks, and... Money's not an issue, right? Text a &M, we can pay whatever we want. So what do you think the, the hangup was? Probably over control of the offense. And as Jimbo's going around, surveying the landscape, he says, well, maybe there's a tug of war a little bit in that initial meeting. And they say, all right, you want to take UNLV? Go ahead, you take NLV, UNLV. And then as Jimbo keeps going through this process, you know, either interviews or not good fits, and he's having the same issue, Jimbo's probably like, ah, dang it. I'll just give him control. And that's where we are today. I mean, is that how is that how you guys read it too? Because that's how I think it's played out behind the scenes. And if that's the case, if Jimbo is hands off, figurehead, recruiter, media, game day decisions outside of the offense, I think it could be a home run. But I also think it could be a crazy combustible mix that could blow up and be an absolute disaster because of the two personalities. And if you throw in DJ Durkin, it's three pretty strong. Hard and Adazio and Adazio. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, like, is, there, is, there, the is your strength coach for... open? Like, like, like maybe we can get one of these these fire strength coaches to come in there. <laughs> so, Evan Stewart, five star wide receiver, stud, tweets dot 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 in the wake of the news. Maybe I don't know, man. I'm not going to interpret the like cryptic tweets of a 19, 20 year old, but. I hope he's on board because you're know, bringing in Petrino. You're hoping that he's got this superstar future NFL wide receiver talent that he could be able to scheme open in, uh, in Texas A&M's offense. I think that schematically it's similar to what Jimbo runs enough to where like Jimbo can tell himself like, Hey, this is still my offense, if you will. And Petrino is a really good play caller. Obviously like if he's not in a sort of a supervisory role, That'll help quite a bit, I think. Um, maybe limit the interaction he has with players on the team and certainly with anybody from other sports. Like they have a football only facility, so you probably don't have to see people from volleyball. Um, you know, look, this could also go really poorly, clearly, like the as, as Chip noted. But Petrino's a great play caller. I think like it's also good because unlike the OCs that Jimbo has had there, I think Petrino will not take Jimbo's lip. Right. Petrino has like, like millions of dollars. He's already been successful in many places. He will give Jimbo the middle finger if Jimbo tries to meddle with him. You know, and I say meddle, like I'm assuming that they're going to let Petrino call the place. Like if you're Petrino, you don't come there. That to me is what the hang up was. Don't you think, bud? Like why maybe he didn't take it right away? Probably also like did, Optics, the, did, did the league office, did the league office have to approve this one? Cause yeah. I mean, you know, like there's some. From an HR perspective, what went down in Arkansas makes him a tough hire. It just does, right? Like, but at the same time, Auburn just hired Hugh Freeze. Yeah, thank, correct. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's Ma the maybe SEC. that's we can get maybe past that's those people. Yeah. Maybe they're like, hey, like, you know, Greg, you let them hire Hugh Freeze. They're like, we 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 can hire Bobby, right? Um, I mean, just the variance bands on this are just so big. Like, we don't know. Like, it, I, I think it'll probably work out. I'll probably be the dummy that that fires in like a fifty to one. You know, Texas A&M national title future next year just because of talent and, you know, 
Bud's going to show up in one of those 12th man out that like overalls that they wear. I'll burn it in week one. <laughs> Yell leader. Yell leader Bud go. Elliott. Yes. 2023 storylines. <laughs> right? Or how, am I doing it right? Yeah. Tom's, Tom's got the. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am. All right. So this is, again, reckless, but like, does Jimbo want to get fired? I mean, I, I, or at least, at least he's approaching. So this is like an office space situation. <laughs> he is at least approaching the like staff building process from a perspective of someone who believes they are untouchable or is just like actively tanking, right? Mm -hmm. Or this just is making him laugh. Or he and Petrino are like closer friends than I realized. I didn't think that they were like buddies. I don't always have them circled, but you know, after seeing Jimbo go for Saban's throat last May, I I don't think that I know Jimbo. You know, like exactly sort of what circles he's running in. But I he he seems to believe he seems to believe or has to think that these moves cannot be criticized because of an eighty six million dollar buyout. I don't know. Okay, who gave him that that's buyout? Because that's the guy who's the most nervous, I think. Ross Bjork. Who's like, if you're Ross Bjork, like, okay, this staff has Steve Adazio, DJ Durkin, now Bobby Petrino. I don't think you really put Jimbo in the same category. Like, they haven't had the whole scandal thing going on. So, I mean, this is – this got to make you nervous to have this many uh, potential liabilities in your – like, under your employee. Also, you gave Jimbo the huge contract extension after – a COVID year and you're basically like the results are real. They're going to continue. And then now the evidence looks like they're not. I, I think West Virginia, West Virginia might open though next year. Probably will. Right. <laughs> Country road. I think, home. I think everybody that knows college football has had the exact same reaction that we have like, Oh, how are they going to get along? Yeah, yeah, you know, like I, that's all. I think that's what it's all about. Like, if they can get along, check the egos at the door, figure out a structure of communication that works, it could be phenomenal. But like, if there's a season that falters, like this season, this thing is going to go off the road. There's going to be screaming matches on the side. I mean, Jimbo wasn't afraid to scream at Jameis and grab. Like, I don't know where Petrino is going to be on the sideline or in the booth. I hope he's in the booth, like so that you don't have the optics. But there could be some yelling matches. But if they're strong enough egos where they're like, Hey, that's just game day atmosphere. And put it aside. Could be great. I mean, he's a great offensive mind. Just envisioning the guy on the sideline whose job it is to hold up the play cards, like with all the pictures on it. And Jimbo and Bobby are both tugging at each of his arms, trying to get him to hold up the card. He wants him to hold up. <laughs> Congratulations. Like SEC network. Congratulations, Texas A&M. You have almost half of the ACC Atlantic. On your coaching, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think. I was like, Ooh, for only like a billion dollars, you got the ACC Atlantic. Jimbo, Bobby, and Adazio had at least a couple spring meetings at Amelia Island together, and they were and they were all Maryland's the same old ACC too, or same division. <laughs> yeah, they were all mm -hmm. in the same division. Yeah, mm -hmm. wait, they all uh, played each other every year. No, Durkin was not at Maryland when no. they were in the ACC, right? Yeah, he was not. My, they were an ACC. That was my. Yeah, because you know, their last ACC year ties. was 13. But I was yeah, thinking like these coaches have actually year. competed against each other. Like if if Jimbo is sour about how Lamar ran it up on him at the beginning of 2016, then that, that might be bubbling beneath the surface. Bobby's guys walked into the huddle in, in, in that, that, that year that Lamar tore him up and just started talking smack to him. Like, I mean, it was. I don't think Bobby was well liked within the ACC, SEC, whatever conference Missouri Valley State's in. Uh, Do you think Bobby's been well liked anywhere? <laughs> the NFL, et, et cetera. I, I will say this too, like on, on a note, like I've heard Bobby talk about this, how he really wanted to get back in college to more of a mobile quarterback because he thought there were some things he could have done with Vic that he didn't do, and he got that guy in Lamar. He's definitely like more about the QB run game stuff mm -hmm. now. And it will be curious to see how Jimbo and those guys use that. Because Bobby runs a similar offense to what Jimbo does, but he is a little more college gimmicky. And so I think he will kind of pull Jimbo, maybe kicking and screaming, a little bit more into the modern era. Remember, he used that again with Christian Ponder, though, at Florida State. He yeah. ran him a lot. So when maybe... Jimbo is desperate, he's pretty good. When he thinks he's got the guys to do it, he wants to run just his stuff.
It kind of feels like to me. Unfortunately, Texas a and loaded up with the most talent possible. So congratulations. <laughs> you're just, you're just only, uh, only the purest of passing concepts in College yeah. Station. <laughs> mm. 